setting up a gas valve on a backseat boiler. My name's Alan Hart and today I'm at Viva Training Academy and we're going to show you how to set up a gas valve on a backseat boiler and we've got Roy with us again today and Roy is the expert trainer. He's got a lot of experience in backseat boilers. He works for backseat for over 20 years repairing boilers and um, doing training on boilers. So we, we've certainly got the, the top top trainer, one of the top trainers in the country with us today. So without further ado, I'll pass you over to, to Roy. This video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision. Please comply with the current regulations at the time. Hi guys, it's Roy Fugler here at the Viva Trainer Academy over in Halifax. And today we're going to look at uh, setting a gas valve up on a backsea boiler. This one here is an 80 HE instant, but the same gas valve is used in the 105, the 105 HE, the 105 instant, the 80, the 80 instant, Potterton, the Potterton Performer range, so the Performer 28, the Performer 24, the main range, the main 30, the main 24, the 30 HE, the 24, so it covers a host of different boilers in the backseat portfolio. One of the problems um, or questions I've been asked is how do we get this boiler to go on to low fire? It's not like one of the newer boilers where you've got a chimney sweep function, but I'm going to show you how to do that and how to set up the high and low burner pressures. Right, so we've removed some of the side panels just to make life easy for you guys to see what we're doing. So I've got my flue gas analyzer, which is a KM458, and I've got it set up for pressures. It's got a magnetized case, so I'm going to stick that on the, on the back. I've already turned the gas off at the isolation point, so when I open the screw, I'm not going to let any gas through. So I'm using a 4mm screwdriver. The reason it's a 4mm is it fits into these gas valves perfectly. In the past, in a past career as a backsy engineer and a senior engineer, one of the problems that we came across was people using the wrong size screwdrivers and damaging it. You don't want to be spending money on a brand new gas valve for the sake of using the wrong screwdriver. So I'm just going to slacken that screw off and it's the bottom screw to get the inlet working pressure. I'm going to connect the hose up. I've got an easy connection, which is made by a company called Norast. It just makes life easier popping that on there. You're not struggling to get your tubes in. So that's on. My manometer's zero, and I'm going to turn the gas back on to check that pressure. So I've now got a standing pressure. Around about 20 to 20, 21 millibar. So to get my inlet working pressure, I'm going to turn the boiler on and I'm going to put a demand on the hot water because in hot water mode, it's going to get it to fire up to high fire. So the boiler's going through its cycle now. It's going to take a few seconds for the fan to kick on, the fan proves, the burn is lit and now it's ramping up onto high fire. So I'm just checking my manometer and I'm up there at around about 19 millibars. So that's my inlet working pressure. That's within the tolerances that most manufacturers say. I would have checked at the meter if it was a little bit low because it's one millibar difference between my meter or the outlet to my meter and the inlet to my appliance. So the next stage is then moving on to doing the actual burner pressure. This is the inlet working pressure. Right, so we've uh, removed the hose, tightened the uh, Test point. At this stage now, I will be testing that to make sure it's not leaking. I could use LDF, but it's in there and it's close to um, electrics. So I personally use a little gas sniffer, quite readily available. There's nothing wrong with using LDF if you're careful, your leak detection spray. So the next stage will be to work to do the burner pressure now. So I'm going to slacken off the top screw. I don't need to turn the gas off to do this because if the solenoid's not open on the gas valve, there's no gas going to get to that point. So I'm just slackening that screw off, connecting my hose onto the tap point, and then I'm going to turn the boiler on. Again, I'm going to put the hot water demand on, 
because I want it to go to high fire. I look on the manufacturer's data badge and on this data badge it says burner setting pressure on high is 10.2 millibars and on minimum it's 2 millibars so that's what I'm going to check next. So we've got the boiler on high, uh, hot taps are in, so my high should be 10.2, it's actually 12 point, just over 12 millibar. Um, before I do any adjustment, I'm just going to check the low, see what the low is. To get these to go down to low, what we do, we remove one of the connections off the modulation coil. It doesn't matter which one, all we're doing is killing the power. It's DC, it's low voltage DC, so it's quite safe to do this. I've just unclipped it. I'm just leaving it out there. So now the boiler's gone to low fire. So I'm checking the reading and I'm about 2, 2.5 millibar, which is round about what we're looking for. It says 2, but there is a slight tolerance on that. So what I'm going to do next is do is connect that back up and then I'm going to adjust the high and then double check the low. So to adjust the, uh, the gas burner pressure on here, I'm using an 8mm spanner and a 5mm socket driver. You could use a socket, it's just so I can hold one nut as I'm adjusting the other. But that's what we'll do next. So we'll remove the little plastic dust cover. I need to adjust the high, so I use the 8mm ring spanner. I pop that on and I use the 5mm socket driver just to hold the minimum adjustment screw so I'm not turning it. To adjust it, to increase, I go clockwise, but I need to decrease, so I need to come anti-clockwise. If I need to move it, I just slide it round, popping it on, holding that, and then bring that down. All the time checking the readings to make sure I'm coming down to where I need to be. I need to do a little bit more of an adjustment. So I'm there, mirrors makes no difference, 10.2. So that's my high. I want to double check the low. So I'm going to remove the little tag, just checking the low. And because I held on to it, the low is 2.3, so that's fine. So now we've adjusted it. So just to finish off the adjustment, we pop the little dust cap back, and we're gonna double check the readings. We always do the final readings with the dust cover in place. So I'm going back onto high. You shouldn't alter it too much, but we always do it with the dust cap on. So yeah, we're there, 10.3. Happy days, and on the low, just wait for it to modulate down, and we're there at about 2.3, so that's fine. Just pop the little tag back on, we can then turn the tap off, remove the analyzer, obviously checking the test point. I'm going to put the boiler back together, and then I'll go through the front display lights with you, telling you what they do now to identify if you've got any issues with it. So I'll come back shortly. So um, we're going to go through the, uh, the lights, explaining what the lights do. The top set of lights have got a double function. So I'm just going to turn the boiler on, onto heating and hot water. As you can see straight away, I've got the first three red lights come on. They're not indicating a fault, they're actually indicating temperature. So the figure at the top is temperature. So 30, 40, 50 degree light on. So it's saying that the core temperature in that boiler being picked up by the flow of the mister, the central heat of the mister, it's saying it's around about 50 degrees. The little green light on the bottom is telling me that I've basically got power to the boiler. I've got 240 volts going in onto the boiler. The other bottom light to my next one is a dual function light. If I turn the tap on, that light comes on to tell me that the boiler realises I've now got a hot water demand. Its other function, it tells me when it's on preheat. So this being the preheat boiler, on the hot water temperature selector, if we turn it all the way around, we're actually turning preheat on. What that means is 
Once I turn that tap off, that light then starts to flash. That's telling me it's in preheat mode. What it's wanting to do is get the core temperature of that boiler up to round about 80 degrees. That way, when it drops water into the plate heat exchanger, when we turn the tap on, that water is already warm. One of the issues that we have with combis is that generally speaking, this time of year, because we're in winter and when this video is being done, the water coming into our properties is colder. So the problem is it takes a little bit longer to get it coming through the taps at working temperature. So that's flashing. As you can see, the 60 degree lights come on now, so it's telling me the core's got up to 60. At this time, the boiler will have modulated down onto its low rate. We've just set the low rate, as you saw early on in this video. So that's running at about 2.3 millibars. We've now got the 70 degree light on, so it's saying the core's temperature's got up to 70. The other light on the bottom is the flame light. That's told me the flame is lit and it's rectified. It's proved that it's lit. I'll come back to that shortly. Once we get up to 80 degrees, the preheat will go off because it's saying, yeah, I've done my job, I'm there waiting. So the other light on the bottom, the radiator symbol is, is obviously the heating. This particular boiler's got, boiler's got an integrated time clock. So if I put that time clock onto continuous, we've got a signal. So the little green lights on telling me I've got a central heating demand. And obviously the flame lights now come on and we've lit up. So it's now moved over onto heating. This particular boiler, with having a motorised diverter head, that motor will have now activated and it's moved the valve to allow water around the radiators. So the top light um, are temperature indicators, but they've got a secondary function. They indicate um, errors or fault codes. So the 30 degree light, there's a little flame symbol with a line through, so that's failure to light, failure to see flame. The 40 degree light is a thermometer, so that's a temperature issue. The 50 degree light, that's a windmill symbol or fan symbol, so that could be fan or air pressure switch. The 60 degree light is pump or low water pressure. The 70 degree light is a tap with a line through, so that's the hot water temperature sensor. And the 80 degree light is a radiator with a line through, so that's a central heating sensor fault. In the future, we're going to be doing more in-depth videos looking at what causes those problems, how to identify them. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon. Thank you very much for that, Roy. And thank you again to Viva Training Academy, who's going the extra mile for you guys now and, and helping this channel out so much. So thank you to them. And thank you to all you guys that are watching and supporting the channel. Please, if you can, put thumbs up, add a comment below, and yeah, thanks for watching.